want you to talk to me about May. Are you very much in love with her? As much as a man can be. Do you think there's a limit? That was from Martin Scorsese's 1993 film, The Age of Innocence, a story about a love triangle in the high society of 19th century New York. It's based on the Edith Wharton novel published 100 years ago this year. I recently spoke with Susan Whistler, executive director of The Mount, Wharton's one-time home in Lenox, which has organized a host of online programs to celebrate the centennial. Susan Whistler, thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure, Jared. Happy to be here. Well, I think that time is so interesting here for when Edith Wharton wrote The Age of Innocence. So here she'd moved on from the Mount. We see the picture behind you of the gardens there. Uh, she's in Paris. We, we've seen these amazing philanthropic efforts that she had underway. She was a journalist on the front lines during World War I. But who, who was she as a writer? Who was she allowed to be as a writer when she wrote The Age of Innocence? Well, it's, it's an interesting story. So um, Wharton was 57 when she wrote The Age of Innocence, which I think not coincidentally is the same age as Newman Archer at the end of the novel. He's the central um, character of the, the novel. Central character, yes. And um, she was deep into her war writing, and the publisher said, really, uh, the public has had enough. We don't want a war story. What we want is a, a novel like The House of Mirth, a novel of manners, and... Um, we're not moving forward with the project. And she, Wharton, had bought two houses recently, one in the suburbs of Paris, just outside of Paris, a villa, and then she bought a house on the French Riviera, which um, was basically a, a shell of a house. It was an, an old convent, over 200 years old, and badly in need of a lot of renovation. And so she needed money. And so kicking and screaming, she came up quickly with this idea for The Age of Innocence. Within seven months, she, she wrote the entire manuscript for The, House of, for the Age of Innocence. Well, I know you have a lot of firsthand materials at the Mount, and, and through these upcoming virtual programs, I'm sure you'll be talking about them, but what do they reveal as you see these edits in her own handwriting in cases? What do they reveal about her writing process for this particular novel? Uh, well, I, I think... Her original handwriting, it's fast and furious. So you get a real sense of the velocity with which she's composing. And then the editorial process is much more painstaking and belabored. And literally, she's cutting and pasting. Uh, you know, she's crossing out. You get a very real sense of the process. And The Age of Innocence, even after it was published, she still wasn't happy with it. And it went through six additional edits before the final version was published. Was this unusual that she would, as you mentioned, she wrote this in just about seven months, a 365-page novel? Did, did she usually work with that kind of ferocity? I would say this, is, uh, this was enormously fast for her. Contemporary writers from Roxane Gay to Dennis Lehane all cite this novel, even today, and how resonant it is today. I mean, just everything that you've talked about, we see um, social mores come into play and empowerment and restrictions on, on rights and, 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 and self, um, you know, self, being self-possessed. How, how deliberately was Wharton writing about all of those things? Oh, I think very deliberately. In fact, I, I consider the novel to be, um, in many respects, perhaps her most autobiographical novel. So th then this was, she wrote this, first of all, it was serialized. It wasn't published as a novel at first. It, it, it's, it's a hit with the readers. It's a hit with critics. And then she wins the Pulitzer Prize. She's the first woman to win the Pulitzer Prize. What kind of an acknowledgement was that to, to give her that designation? Uh, well, she called it tainted, actually. She had mixed feelings about it. She was very happy with the $1,000 check that came with it, but she calls it tainted because of the controversy surrounding the selection. It was originally supposed to go to um, Sinclair Lewis, and uh, he was unanimously chosen by the board. It was an award given by Columbia University but uh, for Main Street, but Main Street was about a, a sort of... A, the narrow-mindedness of small Midwestern town. And so the Columbia uh, University president overruled the decision and uh, instead chose to give it to Wharton. And everyone actually on the selection committee resigns. So it was a, it was a fairly controversial choice. And it was also supposed to be given for the novel that best represents the highest in American values 
and morals and uh, you know the best of American manhood. And Wharton did not like her novel to be characterized that way. I've been there with you to the Mount, to her house in the Berkshires, and, and you have a fabulous library. I've tried to assemble many of her own volumes, including one major one this year. Tell me about that. Yes, yeah, so uh, we are the beneficiaries. We received this in, I guess it was in late December, uh, Wharton's own first edition of, uh, it was her copy of The Age of Innocence that contains her signature and her book plate. And it was donated by Dennis and Andrea Kahn, uh, uh, who live in New Jersey, and they contacted us out of the blue. And she didn't just have any library. I mean, anybody who, who wants a library loves to spend time in them. This is one to die for. She, she very meticulously curated what she gathered. Oh, very, very much so. And we have about 2,500 of her volumes. It's not her complete library. Part of it was destroyed um, in World War II. But um, we have, uh, you know, we have, we, we acquired the bulk of the collection uh, back in 2005 or six from an English bookseller. But um, volumes do tend to appear and find their way back. So we have many very interesting stories. Well, you have uh, beautiful grounds there at the Mount. People can visit her home. Uh, you mentioned her gardens earlier, and I know she considered herself in some respect a better gardener <laughs> than she did a, a writer. But what are your plans for the summer? I, I know you can't answer with any certainty, but, but what are your hopes and expectations for the summer in terms of opening? Well, we have taken the position, we do have 50 acres of of beautifully manicured gardens and woodlands, and uh, abutting those 50 acres are another oh, 120 acres of, of trails, which we are now managing. And so the regulations issued by Governor Baker with respect to public parks have been the most lenient. And so we have been basically operating as a public park our, in terms of our grounds, and they remain open to the community and the public for just walking the dog or reflection, that sort of thing. Um, we are in phase, we are slotted for phase three, which is uh, open at the earliest June 29th. So we are making preparations to open the house sometime in early, early to mid July. Well, the, the big news in all of this is it gives people just enough time to read the book before going out and spending time with you and visiting the Mount. Thank you so much for being with us. My pleasure, Jared. Thank you very much. And I look forward to seeing you in person as soon as that's possible.